everybody, I'm Andrew Brongan, and welcome back to the Mobile Ads Garage. Today, with the help of my partner, Gary the Graphics Guy, we get to cover something awesome, Kotlin. One of the biggest cheers at Google I.O. this year came when Stephanie Cuthbertson announced that Android Studio 3.0 would include built-in support for Kotlin. And it was for good reason. Kotlin compiles to good old-fashioned JVM bytecode, but as a modern language, it includes a ton of features that can help you code faster and better. Things like single abstract method conversions, explicit nullability, default parameters, the Elvis operator, and a bunch more. Plus, because everything's still running on the JVM, Kotlin interoperates with Java. That means the same mobile ads SDK you've been using to display ads from AdMob and DoubleClick in your Android apps works right out of the box with Kotlin. Now, Gary and I are part of developer relations. Our end of things is creating developer resources. So the big announcement for us is that we've updated our stuff to support Kotlin and the changes are live. Our developer site now features Kotlin code snippets alongside Java for its publisher guides. You can just click back and forth to see what a particular technique looks like in either language, and you can cut and paste code right into your own integrations. We also created Kotlin versions of our open source samples, not only to show you how the code works, but also because I wanted to write a bunch of stuff in Kotlin. Seriously, it's a great language. All the code got smaller and tighter. Actually, you don't have to. Let's dive right in with a simple banner implementation in Android Studio. Okay, so here's what I'm starting with, just a simple Hello World app in Kotlin, and I'm gonna put a banner across the bottom. So step one, let's get the mobile ads SDK imported. Now there's nothing different here between Java and Kotlin. It's the same SDK, so it's the same dependency in your build.gradle file. There we go. And now I can come into my activity class, which is in Kotlin, and call the initialize method for mobile ads. And the only difference here is that I don't put a semicolon on the end of the line, really. Now, I do need an app ID for the second parameter, and since I haven't registered this little sample, I'm gonna use the sample app ID from our quick start guide, which you can use too. Uh, this is great if you're just experimenting, you can cut and paste it, just like I'm doing here. There we go. Okay, so the SDK is imported and initialized. Let's get a banner into the layout. This is the XML layout file for my activity, and I'm just gonna drop in an add view tag and put wrap content on both the height and width. There we go. Next up, I need an ID so I can reference it later, and I'm just gonna call it add view. There we go. And now for some layout constraints that'll put my banner centered at the bottom of the screen. As you can see, I'm using constraint layout, which is the new hotness and it uses these individual constraints to get everything locked in place. So I'm locking start to the beginning of my parent, end to the end of my parent, and so on. And there we go. All right, let's get the add size attribute in place. And as you can see, Android Studio isn't giving me any intelligence on that attribute, and that's because I haven't added the XML namespace for ads. So let me pop up here and add it. And I'm gonna copy the URL from app up here. And this res auto URL you see, that just tells the system it can find the namespace definition inside the final APK. The Google Mobile Ads SDK actually includes it, so the namespace's attributes are built into your app automatically. Cool, now we can come back down and put in an ad size of banner. And also let's get the ad unit in place. And here again, I haven't registered this app because I'm just messing around, so I'll use the test ad unit from our banner guide, which again, you can use this too. It'll always return test ads so you can bang away on it without worrying about loading a live production ad. Cool. Now it's back to the activity. All right, now in Java, to use a UI element from your layout, you'd have to go find it with a find view by ID call like this. But with Kotlin come these really handy Android extensions. They're generated automatically and you can import them with a statement like this one. So Kotlin X, Android, and then synthetic, and then main for my source set and the name of my activity. Once that set of classes is imported, I get these automatically populated properties in the activity class that correspond to the elements of my layout. So I can just call load add right here and give it a request object. 
I know there are a bunch of open source projects that produce a similar effect, many using annotations, but this one runs through a Gradle plugin, which means it can really encapsulate away a lot of the wiring and produce a great result. All right, with my banner in place and a call to load ad, let's run this sucker. And there's my banner, job done. All right, so there's a banner in Colin. I think the Android extensions alone make it easier. Exactly. All right, let's step it up and do an interstitial. That'll give me a chance to talk about Kotlin's null safety. Back into Android Studio. So here's my app. It's dead simple, just two buttons, one for loading an interstitial and one for showing it. To save time, as you can see, I've already got the SDK imported. I'm already calling initialize. And my buttons, of course, are right here in the layout file. So all that's set up to go. All right, first things first, let's get an interstitial add property to hold a reference to my add object. There we go. Now you'll notice that question mark, which declares this as a nullable property, and I'm required to explicitly initialize it, which I'll do with a null. I could actually call the interstitial add constructor right there in the property definition, rather than using null and doing it later. But after so many years of instantiating everything and on create, that, that just feels wrong to me, like it would somehow be bad luck. Uh, it totally works though, so feel free to try it in your own apps. So, like I said, I'm gonna instantiate it down here and on create. And I need to set the add unit ID property, but since this is just an app I'm fooling around with and I haven't registered it, I'll cut and paste the one from our interstitial guide. And just like banners, you can use this add unit as well in your own experiments. It always returns test ads, so you won't get yourself into trouble by loading and showing ads with it. And there we go. Now there's a couple other things of note here. First, this is the save call operator, and it ensures that if this variable were null, rather than getting a null pointer exception, the call to set the property would just be ignored instead. So it's a built-in null check. Also, you can see I'm setting a property called add unit ID here. Fun fact, that property does not exist. If you looked at the class definition for interstitial add, there's no field or property called add unit ID. There are two methods called get add unit ID and set add unit ID though, which Kotlin synthesizes into this property for you. When you assign to it, you're really calling set add unit ID under the hood, and when you read it, you're calling get add unit ID, but your actual code is simplified. So with the object in place and the add unit set, let's get the buttons in play. For that, I'm gonna use the Android extensions again. There we go. Now I can come down here and put an on click listener on the load button. And this is another cool Kotlin feature. On click listener is a single method interface and Kotlin will automatically convert this Lambda into an anonymous class implementing the interface. Plus you can use these cool braces instead of parentheses. So in here, I'll drop a safe call to load add. There we go. Then I'll scroll down and I'll put an on-click listener on the show button. And inside, I'll call the show method on my interstitial. Now there's just one piece left. If you recall, the show button starts off disabled. So I need to enable it when an ad loads. For that, I need to assign an ad listener implementation to the ad listener property on my interstitial ad. And this is another one of those synthesized properties. In Java, you'd call set ad lister instead. And I'm just gonna do a basic implementation that just overrides on ad loaded and sets is enabled on the show button. And that's another synthesized property. There we go. And up here, I do need the question mark that makes the assignment a safe call, but that's it. Let's run it. All right, I'm gonna click load. And when the ad loads, there goes my show button. And there's my test ad. Okay, I have one last trick to show you. I've been using a nullable variable to hold the reference to my interstitial ad, but I can get around that by calling the interstitial ad constructor in the declaration, or I can use this cool late init keyword. This tells Kotlin, hey, I'm marking this as non-nullable, but I'm not gonna assign a value just yet. Just trust me that I'll assign one before I try to read this value. With that in place, I can get rid of the save call operators and just do the normal non-null save calls. Because I know I'm instantiating the add and on create before I do any of this other stuff, I'm still safe from null reference exceptions. So you got a couple different ways to structure the code and either way we've got our ad showing, so job done. 
So there's an interstitial. That's two ad formats in one video. Can't beat that. Hopefully this has inspired you to mess around with Kotlin a little bit. It really is a great language. Now, as always, I've got some links to resources for you down in the description for this video. First up are a couple good videos about Kotlin from Google I.O. 2017. I've also got links to our guides for banners, interstitials, and the other formats, which have those Kotlin updates I mentioned. Plus a link to our GitHub repo where you can see all our Kotlin samples. As always, if you've got a question about this episode or an idea for something you'd like us to cover, leave a comment below and Gary and I will see you next time.